again! We're back! Um, today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how to make something much, much, much better than a bar plot. Um, and we're going to be using this data set called Enscom's Quartet. And it's pretty wonderful because if you were to look at Enscom's Quartet on paper, all of these data sets would have the same standard deviation, the same mean, except when you visualize them, you're going to find out they look pretty different. So today we're going to learn about one, the importance of data visualization, and two, why to never, ever, ever make a bar plot. So let's get plotting. And we're just going to jump right in. First, we're just going to load our packages. We're going to be today messing around with our classic ggplot, Dippler and Tidier, and then also we're going to be using our Carto color, which will be kind of snazzing up some color at the end just for fun to do something new. So yeah, let's run that. Um, and here you're going to see I've set my theme. I do this so that um, at the end of my uh, ggplot chunk, I don't have to say plus theme black and white or plus theme light, anything like that. I've spent a little bit too much time in my life <laughs> making my official theme that I really like. Um, you can do whatever you want, but this theme set essentially sets the theme for the rest of the code chunks uh, within that script. So I kind of like doing it at the beginning, get it out of the way. And now we're going to la load our data uh, called Enscomp because it comes from Enscomp's quartet. And this is from base R. I'm just going to move my head down here. <laughs> and you can see it right here. And we can click on it. Um, and so what it is essentially, like I was saying before, is that these x's, x1, x2, x3, you can see they all have the same mean. And these y's, y2, y3, they also have the same mean. So that's kind of crazy, right? And that's kind of what I'm going to be going today of why bar plots aren't enough really to communicate all the data that we want. In order to really get a bar plot to work in R, you actually have to do quite a bit of a legwork. But we're going to do this is actually by cleaning our data. But I just wanted to take time to go through it um, and just kind of explain what I'm doing. So originally we have all of these columns with the X's and the Y's, right? And so what I want is that I want all the X and Y values to be grouped under a column of x and a column of y and then we can group them by set because I want the set 1 to be grouped then I want the set 2 to be grouped because you can see 1, 2, 3, 4 so we're going to clean that up and the way I'm going to be doing this is by using a little thing called pivot longer so I'm going to pivot everything and so what I'm going to do now is actually define how my columns need to be re recoded so here we have x1, x2, x3 so what I'm essentially doing here in the first call is that we have this dot value. And this dot value is not something that I have made. This is something in, in the coded within R. The dot value is actually going to be transformed into your variable. And so we have to first tell R, how are we naming these columns? Because right now it's x1, y1, what does this mean? So we need to first tell it in the name pattern that the first symbol is going to be something and the second symbol is going to be something. And so here we have x and our y, and then the second part of that code, we have the number. So what we're saying is that that first dot, this pattern, is corresponding to this dot value. And this dot value indicates that the component of the name defines the name of the column. Everything that isn't a number becomes a column name. So here it's saying this x and this y, and everything else so all the numbers are going to be grouped under a column called set. And so uh, I could call this set, I could call this year, I could call this fish, I could call this whatever I want to, but I'm calling it set because why not? And then finally, what I'm doing is I'm transforming set, this new factor that I'm grouping at, as a factor. Because even though this is one, two, three, four, I don't really need them as numeric. I don't want them to be numeric. I want them to be factors. So I can set this as a factor. I'm storing this under the name comb, like antscomb, but just comb, short. And let's run that. What our original data set had here was 11 observations, and now this has become 44. Why is that? Because remember, for each set, it's pivoted it longer. So there's four sets, so this 11 times four is 44. And now instead of eight variables, we have three. Why? Because for our dot value, we had our x, our y, and then we defined the rest as set. So let's look at it, just so you can see I'm not <laughs> lying to you. Um, and here they are. So we can sort them based on set 1. So that's our x, this is our y, set 2, set 3, set 4. And this is, again, exactly what we wanted because these correlations based on the set 
is that basis of Enscom's quartet that we really care about. And also, when it comes to graphing, it's much easier to have all of your x's grouped under x and all of your y's grouped under y uh, instead of that weird x1, x2, x3 thing. The last thing we're going to do is that we're just going to be looking at the y's for this uh, just because we don't need to look at a million bars. Uh, I just said, hey, uh, for every set, look at the y variable and just give me the mean. And so that's what the call is. So with that, let's go into level one. Um, and that's going to be our basic bar plot. You can see here, I have my data frame, df means. Uh, I've got my aesthetics. On x, I have my set. On y, I have the y, which is going to be the mean. And then for fill, I've just colored it based on the set. And here you can see them. Not very informative, right? Actually, let's take a look at that data set really quick, just so you can see what I've done here. Um, so these data frame means, again, there's those four sets I was telling you about. And remember, all of the means within these set are identical, because that's in Scum's Quartet. So here we are. This is our bar plot. Not very interesting, not very informative, why do people use bar plots? <laughs> so, we can do better. Let's do it. First thing we're going to do is that we're going to put some raw data under this. So you're going to see that um, I have pretty much moved all of my data from the original level one to the geom bar call. Because actually, you don't have to put all of your ggplot information, or the aesthetics rather, in the first line if it's not going to be globally used. What do I mean by this? I mean that you can actually have multiple data frames. So you have data from DF means. Here you have data from comb. Um, and if you want to combine them onto the same plot, you have to then define for each row your own data set and what's happening. And this can be really useful when you have multiple uh, data frames floating around that you want to quickly visualize onto one single plot. And uh, that's what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, that's also one of the reasons why you can't have, for example, um, these aesthetics put on the first line because then you're going to get errors going down further because ggplot's going to think you set this um, trend to happen globally when in fact you didn't. Um, so let's run this and see what happens. What do I have here? I have my geom bar. Had that from before. But what I've added here is the raw data of Anscom's quartet. And so you can see that here. I've set them and shape 21, that beautiful hollowed point that I like. And I've also, from DF means, said, hey, I want you to really emphasize the mean here. Uh, please make it uh, a nice big size three red dot. And already we're seeing there's some, there's some interesting things. Despite these bars being identical, the spread of the data isn't the same, right? And so already we're seeing what these bars were hiding, but we can do even better because what we're going to do is just get the bars out of there. Let's change our bar plot for and box So plot. you can see already there's differences within these sets, right? Uh, as you know, perhaps from a box plot, that's going to be the median with the interquartile range. And for fun, I also kept uh, the, the mean points from our DF means data set just to show. I mean, look here on set two, the difference between the median and the mean is, is noticeably different. Also, now that we have these box plots, we can see these crazy outliers here. If these were animals biologically, that, that could be potentially really interesting data. What's happening in set three and four that's not happening in set two? The bar plots really tend to erase and tend to overwrite um, a lot of the information that could be potentially really valuable to us as scientists. So with that, let's move on to level three. I'm gonna take this uh, piece by piece. So first, we're just going to do something really simple. Notice that I'm moving now my aesthetics back to the GG plot line. I'm going to have it universally applied. Um, I like to do it when I can um, because I think combining multiple data sets, though it's nice, uh, it can be prone to error. So let's just run this. And you're going to be seeing I'm using Geom Jitter. So what does that do, Geom Jitter? Well, um, it, introduce, it introduces a little bit of random variation, uh, either on your X or Y axis or both, um, to kind of spread the points out a little. And why this is important is because uh, if all of your points are on top of each other, you 
will lose them. You don't see them anymore. Um, I would never do this if I have two continuous variables. So remember like temperature and height. I would never do that because those points have a lot of meaning. But here set is a factor. Here it's a category. So it doesn't really matter if it's so much to the left or to the right of that category, right? Because all I'm doing is just spreading them apart within that category to show all of the data that, that are there. A stroke here uh, affects how uh, thick the, the circles are. So here you can see they're a little bit thicker. I kind of like them like that. Um, I think it looks classy. <laughs> and now we're actually just going to add, add some color because I think it's kind of fun. Um, and then we're going to be adding a line. So let's just run this. So what we're seeing is this beautiful sunset palette uh, from that Carto color that we installed. Um, and then we have uh, uh, just a straight line that we put at the y-intercept of 10. Why did I do that? Just because I wanted to. I wanted to perhaps, as a biologist, perhaps all of the values over 10 are interesting to me, right? Um, this is not set any kind of fact, but you know, what if? Um, I, I think it's a good tool to know how to use. Um, and already, look at how different this is from just a simple bar plot, right? Here we could show if values greater than or less than are meaningful. We're showing the data spreads aren't identical. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let's take it one step further. Uh, what we're going to add here is a statistical summary. I think these are so awesome uh, because what you can do is that you can take uh, your data and you can take the mean, but then you can do something even better than that. Uh, instead of just taking the mean, you can take the mean plus the confidence limits and bootstrap them. And so that's a really scientifically, statistically sound way of kind of looking at the data and you pretty much look at the spread of the data and you keep on measuring and measuring and measuring and that gives you your mean plus the confidence limits around it. Um, so let's just add that, see what happens, and there they are. Um, so here we can see this is the mean and again we know all the means are identical, right? So it's not very crazy that these are all the same. Um, but you know there are many different kinds of data transformations you can do with stat summary and uh, I really invite you guys to go and look at them. Uh, the final thing we're going to be doing today is annotating these data um, with, uh, with a square. <laughs> I think it's nice, kind of, let's say hypothetically we wanted to highlight these three data points from these sets for some strange biological reason. Uh, we're going to use something called annotate. And so what we can do is that we can just draw a rectangle. And so we pretty much have to define the the geometry of this rectangle that we're drawing. So what we're saying is that uh, we want this rectangle to be pretty much just drawn around here. So we want the x to go to negative infinity, to positive infinity. We need uh, the y minimum to start at 10, and then it can just go up to infinity. And the reason I'm putting it on the second line instead of down below is because remember, on ggplot, things paint on top of each other. So the order of my geometry matters. So I want this square to kind of be behind everything, and I want my points to be on top of it. So let's run that, and here we go. It's our final plot. Um, nice and simple and classy. We've got our dashed line. We've got this beautiful rectangle kind of highlighting these other points. Who knows what they mean? Maybe something interesting. Um, and we're just showing, you know, the spread of the data in a way that you would have never captured with a bar plot. Um, just for fun, I want to show you kind of what Anscom's quartet looks like because we've been kind of messing around with it for the past 10 minutes. Um, and so here we go. X to X, Y to Y, wrapped by the set. And look at this. Can you believe it? Um, all of these data sets have the exact same mean, exact same standard deviation, and exact same correlation between variables. Visualize your data, look into it, investigate what's happening, look at the relationships between your variables. Imagine all four of these relationships on paper, if you just looked at the numbers, are exactly the same. Like, that just like rocks my world. I think that's so crazy. And so that's the importance of data visualization. That's the importance of not using bar plots. And that's the importance of being curious and asking questions. So I hope you guys learned something today. Um, I sure had a lot of fun getting back into this. And so stay plotty and stay curious. See you soon.